flawed assumptions regarding FCC, Federal Communication Commission in the United States, and ICNRP, International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, Exposure Limits for Radio Frequency Radiation, brought to you by the International Commission on the Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Fields, October 2022. Scientific evidence invalidates health assumptions underlying the FCC and ICNRP exposure limit determinations for radio frequency radiation, implications for 5G. In the late 1990s, the FCC and ICNRP adopted radio frequency radiation exposure limits to protect the public and workers from adverse effects of radio frequency radiation. These limits were based on results from behavioral studies conducted in the 1980s involving 40 to 60 minute exposures in five monkeys and eight rats, and then applying arbitrary safety factors to an apparent threshold specific absorption rate, SAR, of four watts per kilogram. The limits were also based on two major assumptions. Any biological effects were due to excessive tissue heating and no effects would occur below the putative threshold SAR, as well as 12 assumptions that were not specified by either the FCC or ICNRP. In this paper, we show how the past 25 years of extensive research on radio frequency radiation demonstrates that the assumptions underlying the FCC's and ICNRP's exposure limits are invalid and continue to present a public health harm. Adverse effects observed at exposures below the assumed threshold SAR include non-thermal induction of reactive oxygen species, DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, carcinogenicity, sperm damage, and neurological effects including electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Also, multiple human studies have found statistically significant associations between radio frequency radiation exposure and increased brain and thyroid cancer risk. Yet, in 2020, and in light of the body of evidence reviewed in this article, the FCC and ICNRP reaffirmed the same limits that were established in the 1990s. Consequently, these exposure limits, which are based on false assumptions, do not adequately protect workers, children, hypersensitive individuals, and the general population from short-term or long-term radio frequency radiation exposures. Thus, urgently needed are health protective exposure limits for humans and the environment. These limits must be based on scientific evidence rather than on erroneous assumptions especially given the increasing worldwide exposures of people and the environment to radio frequency radiation, including novel forms of radiation from 5G telecommunications for which there are no adequate health effects studies. These are the authors of the publication. They come from Slovakia, the United States, Turkey, Brazil, Sweden, Canada, Finland, the United Kingdom, Australia, China, and the Ukraine. The FCC ICNRP relied on acute exposures lasting between 40 and 60 minutes, behavioral studies in small groups of animals, eight rats and five monkeys, performed in the 1980s to establish exposure limits for radio frequency radiation. The numbers in parentheses refer to references in the publication. FCC and ICNR base these limits on two major assumptions. Biological effects were due to excessive tissue heating and no effects would occur below the thermal threshold. Twelve additional assumptions not specified by FCC ICNRP are discussed in this presentation. We maintain that these studies and the subsequent limits are inadequate to protect humans and wildlife against acute or chronic exposure. Countries that rely on FCC ICNRP limits are not protecting their citizens or the environment. Children, pregnant women, and those with electrohypersensitivity are particularly vulnerable. This presentation exposes 14 flawed assumptions and counters them with peer-reviewed scientific studies that number in the thousands.
Here are the 14 flawed assumptions regarding radio frequency limits. Number one, threshold for any adverse health effects caused by whole body exposure to radio frequency radiation between the frequencies of 100 kilohertz to 6 gigahertz occurs above a specific absorption rate, SAR, of 4 watts per kilogram. Any adverse effects above the SAR threshold are due to tissue heating, and no adverse effects are possible below this threshold value. Number two, radio frequency radiation is incapable of causing DNA damage other than by heating. There is no mechanism for non-thermal DNA damage. Number three, two to seven exposures to radio frequency radiation for up to one hour duration are sufficient to exclude adverse effects for any duration of exposure, including chronic exposures. Number four, no additional effects would occur from radio frequency radiation with co-exposure to other environmental agents. Number five, health effects are dependent only on the SAR value. Carrier wave modulations, frequency, pulsing, or polarization do not matter except as they influence the SAR. Number six, the multiple human studies that find associations between exposure to mobile phone radio frequency radiation and increases in brain cancer risk are flawed because of biases in the published case control studies and because brain cancer rates have remained steady since the time the use of wireless communication devices became widespread. Number seven, there are no differences among individuals, including children, in the absorption of radio frequency electromagnetic fields and susceptibility to this radiation. Number eight, there are no differences among individuals in their sensitivity to radio frequency radiation induced health effects. Number nine, a 50-fold safety factor for whole body exposure to radio frequency radiation is adequate for protecting the general pub population to any health risks from radio frequency radiation. Number 10, a 10-fold safety factor for whole body exposure to radio frequency radiation is adequate for protecting workers to any health risks of radio frequency radiation. Number 11, Exposure of any one gram of cube-shaped tissue up to 1.6 watts per kilogram or 10 grams of cube-shaped tissue up to 2 watts per kilogram, the duration is not specified, will not increase the risk of that tissue to any toxic or carcinogenic effects in the general population. Number 12. Exposure of any one gram of cube-shaped tissue up to 8 watts per kilogram or 10 grams of cube-shaped tissue up to 10 watts per kilogram, duration not specified, will not increase the risk of that tissue to any toxic or carcinogenic effects in workers. Number 13, there is no concern for environmental effects of radio frequency radiation or for effects on wildlife, pets, farm animals, or plants. Number 14, no health effects data are needed for exposure to 5G. Safety is assumed because penetration is limited to the skin with minimal body penetration. Some of these assumptions are wrong. Some are based on inadequate research. Certain aspects have been ignored. The safety factors are arbitrary and 5G remains untested. These 14 flawed assumptions are replaced by scientific facts. Number one, a four watt per kilogram is not an adequate limit to prevent harm, since adverse health effects have been documented at levels well below this thermal limit. Number two, Ionizing radiation is the wrong model for non-ionizing radiation bioeffects since ionizing radiation has a direct effect while non-ionizing radiation has an indirect effect on DNA.
One of the mechanisms is oxidative stress. Number three, FCC and ICNRP limits do not protect against chronic exposure since they did not test chronic exposure with long-term studies. Number four, FCC and ICNRP ignore interactions with environmental agents despite studies showing synergistic effects. These are effects that are more than additive with various carcinogens, mutagens, and inflammatory agents. Number five, FCC and ICNRP ignore wave characteristics by focusing exclusively on SAR, despite these characteristics being biologically active. Number six, statements that brain tumors are not increasing is false because glioblastoma multiforma incidence has been increasing in the United Kingdom and the United States since the 1990s which agrees with case control experiments showing greatest risk is for ipsilateral tumors in parts of the brain that receive the highest radiation for mobile phones, namely the cerebellum, the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. Number seven, FCC ICNRP ignore differences in radio frequency absorption, despite the fact that children absorb more radio frequency radiation than adults, since they have a thinner skull a smaller head, more conductive brain tissue, and are still growing and developing. Number eight, FCC and ICNRP ignore individual sensitivities despite the fact that children, pregnant women, and those with electrohypersensitivity are more vulnerable to most environmental pollutants, including radio frequency radiation. Number nine, 50-fold safety factor for whole body exposure to radio frequency radiation is inadequate to protect the public. A more appropriate safety factor based on toxicology should be between 300 and 1,000-fold lower. Number 10. 10-fold safety factor for whole body exposure to radio frequency radiation is inadequate to protect workers who have not been informed of the real health risks since FCC ICNRP believe there are no health effects below their thermal limit. Number 11, the larger the tissue, one gram versus 10 grams, and the higher the frequency, the less reliable the specific absorption rate for localized effects. Tissue size is too large for documented effects at the cellular level and SAR is an inappropriate metric above 6 gigahertz. Number 12, while item 11 applies to the general population, item 12 applies to workers. Workers are not informed of health risks. Number 13, FCC and ICNRP ignore environmental effects of radio frequency radiation despite numerous studies documenting electromagnetic field interferences with orientation, migration, food finding, mating, nesting and den building in animals. Plants are also adversely affected by radio frequency radiation. Number 14. 5G small cells are likely to increase radio frequency exposure since many more antennas will be closer to human populations and since 5G consists of microwaves used in 3G and 4G which are known to be harmful and millimeter waves which have not been tested for safety. Here we have a summary of the 14 flawed assumptions. Some of these assumptions are wrong Some have been untested. Ionizing radiation is the wrong model to use for non-ionizing radiation biological effects. Certain aspects dealing with waveform, with synergistic events in the environment and effects on the environment are ignored. And finally, the safety factors used to protect workers and the public are arbitrary. We have an urgent need to establish safe radio frequency guidelines. For more information, 
visit www.icbe-emf.org. Thank you.